episode of The Road Not Taken, discussions with assorted professionals with a background in mathematics. I'm your host, Ider Kikianti. I'm your host, Belinda Stobobar. I'm your host, Madeleine Labiskakhni. And I'm your host, Rory Biggs. Okay, so this is our very first episode of the new series that we're starting called The Road Not Taken. So let's introduce to our audience what is this uh, series about. Who wants to start? Well, when I was um, an undergrad, I was not sure what I wanted to do with a degree in mathematics. And I was really stressed about it because my friends knew they were going to be actuaries or going to be engineers. They had this word and I had no idea. So I think the, the main aim for this is to give you some ideas of what you can do um, because it's a very open field. Um, yeah, so to share some ideas of options um, when you're done with a degree in maths. Yeah, I uh, we, we got some emails from students sometimes saying that, um, well, I'm studying mathematics, so at the end of the degree I'll have a BSc in mathematics, so what, what, what kind of possible job opportunities would I have? The obvious one, they always say teaching, um, but... <laughs> <laughs> Well, we need good teachers. We do need good teachers. Um, but I mean, yeah, yeah that is definitely, uh, it's, I think it's very hard, especially for first years coming in to fathom. Well, w what is it that you can do with mathematics? Or mm. really, what is mathematics? What do people mm. do with mathematics? Yeah. It's, it's yes. not an easy question to answer. I mean, uh, do we just sit in our offices making sums? That, <laughs> yeah. that, making that doesn't sums? sound right. Using calculators. <laughs> is, that, is that what a mathematician does? Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> now, it's also hard to actually pick your your courses, like when you start off. Mm. I mean, like you don't know, even if you go onto your honours and stuff like that. You, yeah. I know many students, they don't know if they should go into the, you know, if they're trying to do applied maths, for example, the one stream or the other stream, things like that. So just choosing your courses in general is also an issue, at least for yeah. me it was. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. No, and I, I think in, in maths, this is a particular problem, but it's, it also is broader than that, right? In other degrees, it's, it's not clear if you study mm -hmm. physics or something, what, what are you going to do with that degree? Mm -hmm. And I, I think often that's a bit tricky in studying a BSc. A BSc mm -hmm. is more a, a sort of training you to think <laughs> and specifically to think in, well, some scientific accepted ways. Yes. And it, it doesn't always matter that much specifically what are the one or two modules or specific topics you covered. It's, it's that training in, in thinking mm -hmm. and, yes, developing a solid base to build on. And I mean, I've, and I'm sure you've also seen people change careers later on. Yeah. Yes. And it's, it's not that big of an issue. Yeah. Mm. Even changing their. Uh, program within the BSc. This this happens, yeah. right? Well, Rory, you're one of them. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you changed from physics, is that right? Yeah, yeah. no, I went to, to university thinking I was going to become a physicist. That was what I had envisioned at that time. Is Physics was exciting me a lot at, at high school. And I thought, ah, th th this, this is good stuff. I'm going to go for it. And by second year, I realized, well, no, it's actually not so much the physics that uh, interested me, but rather that it was a good applied mathematics at that stage. And it, it was an uh, application of mathematics that I wasn't getting from other perspectives at that time. And it was really the maths in the physics that I loved. So it was after second year that I said, no, I'm switching fully to mathematics. This is where my passion lies. Yeah. Mm. I, I like the keyword you said there, perspective on what mathematics is. And I suppose this is what we're trying to do in the series, is to give sort of um, perspective from people, right? Not just us. In, in future, yeah. we'll invite people to uh, come and speak on their experience. So it's easier to uh, understand something from, well, from firsthand experience, but we can't do that, obviously. Mm -hmm. But from <laughs> but having um, having listened to people who have done uh, BSc mathematics and then not necessarily becoming a mathematician, which we still want to discuss what is a mathematician. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and speak about uh, what are the challenges, how did they find it, why did they change career, that kind of thing. So this is, this is what we want to talk about in this series. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Yeah, yeah so, um, well, we are all academics, right? So we can't speak on <laughs> the sort of per well. first-hand experience on these other career options. But um, do we want to have a quick discussion on sort of just, you know, speaking to friends or speaking to colleagues, uh, what kind of sort of your typical career choice in mathematics, except um, in academia? 
a teacher, obviously, mm -hmm. like we mentioned, and I think a lot of people go into finance. I mean, that's probably yeah, the biggest thing the, as well. Yeah, pop popular choice, right? Finance. Yes, and also, obviously, all of the actuarial students that don't make it, they or that don't think they're going to go on with actuarial, they also come eventually to do the maths honors, the mm. what mm. maths of finance, financial mm. engineering. Yeah, those are probably the biggest ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. My, most of my friends that studied with me and as well as my postgrad students also went into finance. I think there's one or two, the exception that went into some other interesting field, but mostly it's finance. And I think it's important to get uh, the message out there that finance is not your only option because it isn't for everyone. It wasn't for me. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so when you say finance, what do we really mean? That they work in banks? Okay. Probably as a quantitative analyst, mostly, yeah. maybe right. data Insurance science ish in that area. Yeah. Right. So yes. basically, f finance industry. This is what we're talking about: yes. banks and 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 um, and yeah, broader okay. sense yeah. of the word insurance company. But I think actually that is a, a telling example in a number of ways. It, it shows that just having a mathematics degree means you've been trained in a certain kind of thinking that is very valuable in that industry. Yes. They are looking for mathematicians. The, the people I have known that have gone into that industry have sort of gotten a job immediately. Mm -hmm. They are desperate for, for, for that level of, of people who can do that kind of work and that kind of thinking. Yes. And I'm sure it's, it's, that's just the, the number one because, well, finance, they sit with all the money. So they're really trying to pull those people. But there, there are many industries that, that want that um, skills that you mm. get by learning mathematics. Mm. And it's not, not always directly that mathematics skill of solving that particular problem and that algorithm you learned. No, it's, it's the much broader picture of a, a way of thinking and reasoning. Mm. Yeah, no, that's very true. Yeah, another uh, well, people the kind of people that I meet I've met with um, with mathematics background is um, science communicator. So um, okay. yeah, so uh, well, uh, last year we had uh, a talk by Eugenia Cheng, who's a mathematician from well, from the UK. She now resides in um, in America, and you know she was an academic, and then she is now working in sort of like an arts college and um, but teaching mathematics there and she writes books about math and um, basically wanting to make mathematics a more collaborative field right where it's it's not mathematics should not be you're doing your research on your own sitting in your lonely office <laughs> that kind of thing so um, it's something that uh, she thinks should be collaborative and and this is the message that she's trying to send out Actually, a lot of good mathematics comes from collaboration. And this is sort of like the messages that she got from her books, or she, she put in her books. And um, another uh, famous person would be Simon Singh, who actually has a PhD in physics, mm -hmm. but he's, uh, he writes a lot about, about mathematics. His, one of his famous books is about uh, for Maslow's theorem, right? Uh, how the, the journey of 300 plus years <laughs> in proving this, <laughs> in proving this theorem. So, um, yeah, I had the pleasure of meeting him actually two years ago. Oh, wow. It was really it was cool. really uh, he g he gave a really good talk. But the, this is this is the kind of uh, a, a possible career for uh, for someone with a background in mathematics is communicate about mathematics to the public. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. yeah, no. So I mean, I think the the goal of getting some guests to to lend a, an outside perspective is is going to be very valuable because we are academics, all of us. Yes. So we. We very much uh, are focused in, well, what's happening in this realm. Yeah. But maybe an, an interesting point, and I think we will have uh, some guests that are academics in the future, sure. is that even just within the realm of academia, there is a wide range of what people are doing yes. with mathematics, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, and it's, it's not just people sitting in the maths department, which mm. you think, oh, yeah, those are the mathematicians. No. I mean, in, in, in my work, just if you, you look at where you publish and, and what mm. other authors are, there's, there's engineers contributing there, there's physicists contributing there. There, there are all kinds of cross um, over and pollination of ideas coming from uh, many areas. And I know in our department, we've also got a, a strong uh, suit of biomathematicians, yes. right? Yes. yes. So that, that might also be an, an interesting link to, to explore. Yeah, yes, definitely. Okay. okay. Um, I think since this is our first episode, maybe it's uh, good to get to know each other a little, um, a little more. So let's see. Let's start with Rory. 
Okay. Who am I? Yes. Tell us about yourself, Rory. Where Where are you from? <laughs> Why did you study math? All that jazz. Well, I'll, I'll tell you a, a, a short snippet, right? Uh, one perspective on, on the, the tale of Rory Biggs. Um, so I grew up actually in the Kruger National Park. Um, in fact, both my parents are very much in the ecological sciences and how that uh, links to, to management of ecology. And uh, I've got two siblings, an older sister and a brother, and they also went very much into that kind of a field, uh, looking at issues of sustainability and uh, the Anthropocene and, well, all kinds of exciting and interesting topics. But I was sort of the, the odd duck there in that I decided, no, I'm going to go and study physics at <laughs> Rhodes University. And that is what I did. Um, I was really enjoying that at, at high school. So I thought, yeah, the, the, this, this stuff is interesting. And of course, there's all kinds of good science communication on physics, which gets one excited. So I went. And, well, I've already told that uh, part of the story, right? I discovered, well, actually, they had some good stories, but it, it was the mathematics behind it that, that really got me going. So I switched over, majored in maths and applied maths. In fact, I did all the maths I could lay my hands on <laughs> and had lots of fun. In fact, I had so much fun and loved it so much, I stay, decided to stay on for a, an MSc and a PhD at Rhodes. And uh, through that, well... I had the opportunity to be part of a, a small research group. And while I was there, we got to grow that. And we had also some good links with Europe. So I spent uh, many months every year, both in Hungary and then later on in the Czech Republic. So, so that was fantastic exposure. And, and it was really special being part of such a, a vibrant, even if it was small, community, uh, looking at, at various problems and researching them. And well... The fun just kept going, so I, I stayed on for a postdoc. Um, and, and yeah, it was, if I look back at it, a ridiculously productive time of my life. Uh, I don't know how many papers we, we managed to produce in that research group. It was uh, really going well, but um, one can't stay in limbo forever, right? Uh, so finally, uh, in 2017, then I took my first uh, permanent job here at UP. And well, uh, the interesting thing that might have happened at UP is that I really realized um, that not only do I like teaching, but I really love it. Um, with some of the large classes we have, interacting with the students, I, that really sh started shining through. And it's something I, I now consider as um, one of the main things also in my life that I really enjoy. Yeah, it's, uh, we, we know about your teaching prowess with your uh, <laughs> awards and whatnot. <laughs> Rory won yeah, many yeah. awards in, in the <laughs> university. Very, uh, we, we, we all like his bubbly personality in class. It's very infectious. <laughs> yeah. Um, so do you, do you want to talk a little bit about your research? I was going to, but then I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, well, yeah, the, 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 the research area that I'm in is uh, an interesting blend of, of being at the same time quite theoretical and also being very applied. So we've got a, a weird crossover, um, even if I, I look at what, what I'm busy doing in research and where I publish with engineers and physicists on the one hand and sort of algebraist and quite pure people on the other hand. Um, and so the, the, the basic problem that uh, we look at is you have a, a surface, possibly in higher dimensions. You have two points on that surface. You want to connect those two points, but you want to connect it in the, the shortest possible path, right? And of course, well, this has uh, all kinds of implications, um, not just for, uh, well, mathematically, beautifully, how do we solve this problem? But this is the, the kind of language that can be used to, to solve the problem of how do you control your satellite? Uh, how do you check its orbit? How do you move the, the arm of a robot in the most efficient way? So it's, it's, I, I very much like that blend, and I, I very much like that basic problem. Mm -hmm. And let me throw in one, one complication that, that makes it even more exciting is not only do you want to connect the two points with any path on that surface, but you're only allowed to move in certain directions. There's some problems with certain directions, right? And you can think of this maybe like you, you're driving in your car, right? Now your car can go forwards and backwards and you can turn the wheel so you can change your orientation as you go forwards, but you can't move sideways in your car, yeah. right? So that is the kind of restriction we're talking about. That, that, that sideways movement is not allowed. And yet we know you can still move your car from any initial position and orientation to any other final position and orientation. How do you do that in the best way? Well, this might be important if you're designing a big factory and you have little robots scurrying around, mm -hmm. right? So 
at the same time, there's the, the highly applied side to that. Mm. But the, 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 the language that we use and the, the best language to use is um, it's in Lie theory. So it's a group of transformations. You bring in some manifold stuff. It's, it's beautiful stuff mathematically. So, yeah, uh, I get very excited about that, too. <laughs> you can say that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Evident, yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. So uh, let's move on to Belinda. Belinda, tell us about yourself. Yeah, so I have actually been all my, my whole academic career, academic career at UP. So um, except for around one year, which I will get to, but I have only recently been full-time employed at UP um, since last year. Um, as I said, all of my degrees I did here um, and all in applied maths. And um, I, the research that we, we do, um, my mother Lane is part of that research, which she will also probably mention later, is, is, is very much on like physical, um, it, it, it incorporates some physics and engineering and so on. So we apply maths to physical structures such as beams and high rise buildings and, you know, chimneys and things like that. And, you know, how they move, you know, when there's an earthquake or wind or something like that. So it's very, very interesting, that work. And um, But then um, when, I, when I finished my PhD, I continued with this as a postdoc for one year or so at UP. And then I actually went into some some other work entirely for another postdoc in 2019 in at UNISA. So that was actually in reinforcement learning and entirely different, obviously, because, I mean, reinforcement learning is a subfield of machine learning. Mm. And the math there is actually really, really interesting. So I thought a bit, maybe I should continue with this while I'm here, but this other work still, you know, catches me. <laughs> I just want to continue with that. So I came back to this when I started with uh, my full-time position and just continue with that. So maybe in the future, I'll still continue with the reinforcement learning. I mean, I have a bit of stuff that's published with it. But again, it was just, I think I'm not done yet with with the actual applied math maths that's, mm. that I've been doing since my PhD, since my master's and my PhD and so on. Yeah. But yeah, so that's basically my research. And then in terms of what I've been wanting to do forever, was definitely not becoming an academic. Like when I was young, I definitely <laughs> did not want to become an academic. Or it wasn't part of my <laughs> long term yeah. goals, at least ever. And I mean, I... I mean, yes, exactly. So, I mean, I think at, I don't even know how the decision of becoming an academic just realized. But even when I was at the end of my master's, beginning of my PhD, I still thought, you know, I would probably just go and become a data scientist or something like mm. that. But it's something that doesn't leave you, the academic. I don't mm. know the academic, um, I don't know how to say that. But it never really just left me, if that makes sense. I just... Right didn't want to go and do something else eventually. So, mm. yeah, and I must say, like, academia has a lot of advantages and perks. I mean, it's not a normal five to, you know, nine to five job, a desk job that you have. And I don't think I will fit that in that anyway. I don't know. You guys are probably the same. It takes a certain type of person to become a, an yeah. academic. So, so, yeah, I don't know. That's just, there's not really much to say in terms of, like, um, very interesting things, but... It's just something that, um, you know, became my career. I don't know how to say that. <laughs> it wasn't a choice almost. Right, <laughs> right. End, yes. yeah. So, yeah, so that's basically, that's basically what my, my history is. Yeah. yeah, you mentioned about um, sort of getting into this full-time job and you find it really overwhelming. Well, you joined the worst possible time, I think, Belinda, last year. <laughs> <laughs> you joined and <laughs> I remember seeing you in the department for, I don't know, probably a month before we went on lockdown. And <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Look, luckily I was at UB before then, so I knew the ins and outs of the, the system, if that makes sense. But yeah. starting to starting like an actual career like that was was hectic so so well i mean i think for everybody it was but yes starting yeah I, like that I, was, I think for the easy. yeah for the new stuff it's just a bit more difficult i feel yes. like yeah no, so but, but overwhelming but you, yes. you've done well it's just, <laughs> yeah i know i think i think we've all adapted so it's definitely taught us to to learn quickly at least yeah learn new yeah. things quickly so yeah, yeah. but yeah the, it's also different because i mean even before um, when I was just doing my, my postgraduate um, degrees, I never, never really gave proper classes. So mm. it's entirely different now mm. that you have to do this online classes. So I don't know even how it is to teach that <laughs> properly, if that makes sense. It's just all these online videos and stuff. So it's very <laughs> different. So once this COVID is over, hopefully I'll experience the proper way of teaching. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Rory, you saying? No, it's it's. I was just gonna say that's uh, for me a very interesting part of uh, academia is, um, well, 
uh, many places, but certainly in South Africa, teaching is actually a huge part of the job. Yeah. But it's it's not something that you get any preparation for mm. while studying. Mm-mm. It it's just like well you've studied you've mastered this material now now teach. Yeah. But teaching actually takes some very specialized skills to to be good at yeah. and and yeah that's uh, it's quite a big jump uh, when you you have to start teaching almost full time. Yeah. 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 yeah it is <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and let's hear from Madeleine. Um, mine is in many ways similar to um, Belinda's story. I've also been in Pretoria my whole life. Um, and I think when I was in school, I figured out that I was quite good at maths. Um, initially, it bored me, though. I don't know if you had the same experience. I was really bored in maths classes. And then I figured out, but wait, I can do a bit more. Um, so And then it started to interest yeah. me. And I just wanted to keep going with this. I love the challenge and that high you get when you solve a problem. I really love that. And together with that um, also came that your friends start coming to you to say, hey, but you get good marks. Can you explain this to me? Um, and I also figured out then that I actually really love the, the teaching part of it, the explaining maths to people. And they started telling me, but they understand this when I explain it. So I thought, well, well this is great. So I actually thought that I might go into teaching, um, but I didn't want to just go the teaching route. So I um, started with my degree in applied mathematics. Um, and I loved it. And then sort of similar to Belinda, after my degree, I wasn't ready to go and become a teacher. And I was like, okay, so let's do an honors. And then one of my professors asked me, so what are you <laughs> going to do after the honors? I was like, mm, I don't know. So he was like, what about a master's? I was like, okay. <laughs> and here I am many years later, <laughs> still, <laughs> at UP, still loving it. Um, and I really love the, the two parts of our, of our careers, the, the challenge, um, the intellectual challenge you get from your research, from doing the maths, and then also the, um, I really get much fulfillment from the teaching part of it, uh, actually um, parting to giving this knowledge to someone else. I really love that. So, um, you know, I think for me, this career is the perfect fit, um, even though it wasn't planned exactly either, but it just, yeah, I think I, can, I cannot imagine doing anything else. So I think that's my story. I, I think that's many jobs in in the world. Is mm-hmm. is you 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 can't foresee um, that is going to be the perfect job for me. Yeah. Uh, you you have to sort of find it, and I think especially as as time progresses and the world is changing, that that's becoming more and more the case. Mm. I think fewer and fewer people are identifying I'm going to become a doctor or I'm going to become an X. It's much more you 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 have to learn how to to have some good fundamentals. And you also have to learn the skill of learning, mm-hmm. right? And those two skills are, are huge and, and useful in, in so many places. And there are going to be so many jobs that we haven't even imagined yet uh, that are going to be available to, to new students coming up. No, sorry. Yeah, I was going to I was gonna say that I heard um, always good things about both both Belinda and Madeleine from the students saying they're, you know, they're mm-hmm. really good. Uh, really good lecturers, really enjoy their classes, that kind of thing. So yeah, you guys done fantastic Thank you. job. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, sorry, uh, Belinda, you were saying. Yeah, I was just gonna um, piggyback on um, Rory's thing about that. Math, the math degree actually is perfect for this thing because there is so many opportunities that if you decide, well, this is not for you, then there is always something else. But, yeah. okay, but either you have a different path. Okay. You, you've been to a few places. I, I have a different path. Yeah, so I was born in um, a, a small town, uh, name is Brastagi in North Sumatra in Indonesia. So that's where I'm from. And uh, growing up, always enjoying math, I think most likely because my mom, she before getting before she, she was married to my dad, she worked as a math teacher. And then she got married and then um, stopped teaching. But of course, she didn't stop teaching her kids. So <laughs> I learned math before, before school even. Um, so yeah, uh, I, like I understand what you said, Madeleine. Like, I also got bored in class because you know, mm-hmm. you know, I kind of like, I don't know. But I, I found that my teachers were very nice. They thought, okay, mm-hmm. this kid's bored. You know, let's give her stuff. So I always get like mm-hmm. extra lessons, like extra mm-hmm. exercises from the teachers. And uh, my high school teacher is the one who even made it sort of. A possibility for me to learn math like what to study math as a possible career option so he said why don't you know st- 
start with a BSc in math, see what, see how, you know, see where you're going with that. And I thought like, oh, is that a possibility? And since then I was sort of like, yeah, I want to be a mathematician, not even understanding what is a mathematician at that point. Right. But mm -hmm. I, I just want to do math for the rest of my life. That's, that's what I thought at, at the age. Then I got into a, uh, uh, university in West Java, which is, so if you know geography of Indonesia, Sumatra is sort of, uh, yeah, was on the West side and, um, Java is sort of center, but in the South. So I, I moved to a, a city called Bandung and I studied at the university there in Institute, Bandung Institute of Technology, studying math. And, um, and I absolutely love it. Uh, <laughs> that first year sort of, I just sort of, uh, yeah, okay, this is calculus. And then, but there's so, there's just so much, um, I think I was fortunate. I got really good uh, lecture teaching calculus and mm -hmm. it's just so much more than just, you know, integrate this, differentiate this and whatever. It's just, um, as, what, what was it? Uh, doing sums in our office that, that was not math. And the, yeah. the, the math that I discovered there is even more interesting than what I thought math was. And I just completely in love with, with it. And um, yeah, and every, every course, I felt like it's, it's, a, it's a learning opportunity. So not a chore for me. So for me, studying like the marks is like secondary I just want to learn all the math possible. So it was very, mm -hmm. uh, it was very, um, yeah, very exciting. And then I moved to Australia uh, to continue studying at Victoria University in Melbourne. And uh, yeah, I finished uh, my PhD. What year was it? Um, 2010. And then I got a job, um, although my, my, uh, my PhD was in sort of more pure mathematics, and afterwards, I got a job through a program called a Mathematics in Industry inter Internship. And I got a job at a bioinformatics lab. So it's an interdisciplinary lab. There are geneticists, there are biologists, there are computer scientists, engineers, and then there's people like me. And we work together. <laughs> we work together um, uh, to detect sort of a gene-gene interaction that's responsible for certain diseases. We're interested mm. in celiac at that point. So we're looking at the genome and then try to map which um, sort of mutation that caused the, um, in which loci the, the, um, the celiac disease uh, sort of potentially, um, which, which uh, loci were uh, uh, responsible for, for, for the disease. And of course, there are other data for other diseases, et cetera, et cetera. And I really like the job. I think it's, uh, it's very different working with mathematicians. Like you speak the language of mathematics and then you start speaking your language of mathematics to people like biologists and <laughs> engineer and this is sort of it's not the yeah. same language so it's sort of like you know learning uh learning how to communicate um to people who are not with not uh not necessarily the same background it's actually quite difficult and there i realized that this is actually really fun just to explain <laughs> right yeah just to explain math to people it's just a lot of fun so but after that i sort of like okay uh in the bioinformatics lab um they the Job of a mathematician, although important, sort of very little contribution. So I was a bit worried about my career. And then I applied for a postdoc fellowship at, uh, in South Africa. And then I moved here. Um, yeah, and I've been here since. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, working um, as a postdoc in, at, at WITS and at UJ. Um, and as Rory said, postdoc is the most productive time of my life. <laughs> I published, I don't know how many papers. <laughs> because you have so much time to do uh, to do research and it was very productive i really like yeah. you know sort of just um sitting around, yeah, sitting around playing, thinking, with thinking. playing with ideas yeah, talking to people, i mean uh, yeah talking beautiful. to people that kind of thing and then but as rory said you know you can't be in limbo forever you can't be postdoc forever you have to get a job a permanent job and, and then in 2016 i joined up and uh it's uh, it's been fantastic i think i also, a similar story to Rory realized that, wow, I really like teaching, actually. Um, it's not just uh, the research I enjoy, but teaching mathematics is something that I really enjoy as well. And uh, yeah, so I think every, every year, even though I teach the same course, I taught one course for four years, but uh, it's always different, right? Because the people you're teaching, to, oh, yeah. it's not the same. So it's the, the different experience every year. And I quite enjoy that sort of just meeting, me meeting the students, um, interacting with them and yeah sometimes you find really interesting <laughs> really interesting yeah. students. No, I, I, it's amazing <laughs> i mean i've i've been teaching first year calculus now this is my fifth year I yeah, think. yeah. Sure. I think and so. students keep on surprising me every year <laughs> with another way of looking at things yeah <laughs> 
Absolutely, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, Very so... interesting stories, either. Really oh. interesting story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I think uh, also that now all of us working in at, at UP, um, we're, we don't have the same experience, I feel like. Um, because we're we're all doing sort of our own thing in the department. The department's so mm-hmm. huge, right? It's, it's, yes. it's big. It's big place. We serve a lot of students in the in the uh, in the university. So maybe we can just touch on a little bit, sort of like what is sort of a day in the life of an academic. Um, it's not representative of everybody, obviously, but <laughs> but uh, maybe just a yeah, a bit of story from well, from each of us. Well, firstly, I think for me is. Um, that, that, that's uh, a tricky framing because wh- one of the things that I really enjoy about academic life is that most days are not the same. Yeah. You have some days where you spend all day doing one thing and then other days where you, you spend all day doing completely different things. Yeah. I mean, I go from, from teaching large classes on some days, having in-depth conversations with students uh, on other days, I might be, well, doing things like this, video production, <laughs> editing, playing around with things like that. On other days, I might be programming to develop systems or, or, or programming some things to do the research. On other days, I might just be sitting around with a piece of paper, writing out an idea, exploring it further. Then, of course, we've, we've, we have students sometimes, uh, uh, postgraduate students that we, we have much more intimate discussions with and, and try and lead them on a mathematical career. So for me, it's uh, the, the variety is so much fun. Mm. I, I, I sort of, I don't think I, I conceived of quite what a wide range of things I would be doing mm. as an mm. academic. Mm. You, you sort of have to be in some ways a jack of all trades because there's bit, so yeah. many small things that, that you need to have some basic skills in. Yes, that's very, very true. Very interesting perspective of looking at it. I never thought about it like that, actually. Yeah, you do many different things. <laughs> the notion of a typical day, I think, yeah, is, is out of the window, especially then 2020 comes. It's a typical day. Changes well, everything as we in. said before, we're not working nine to five jobs. No. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, there's some routine, right? Like uh, they're getting coffee in the morning. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I and so, you know, catching up with your colleagues. Well, before pandemic, we're sitting in the tea room, you know, at ten o'clock. Yeah. You know, just sort of catching up and and you know, maybe exchange ideas with our colleagues, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, I I was uh, yeah recently asked by um, by someone in the faculty to talk about sort of um, about teaching, and then I sort of um, come to realization that actually in the past few years. What I did a lot is actually teaching outside of the classroom, so not necessarily mm-hmm. just the courses that I sort of like assigned to. So, okay, here's te- teach multivariable calculus or whatever. But I also spend uh, some time with students, like outside of the um, classroom. So I, uh, it all started with one student back in 2018 who <laughs> I found extremely smart and he's just bright and he's, you, I can see his thirst, right? He's just like, I want more math. Just give me more math. So like, all right, I'll give you more math. So we had like... Uh, sort of extra discussions outside of the classroom and then he asked me about uh, oh there's this course that you know you don't offer at UP but I really want to learn about it it's like okay we can do this so then I told him that oh well you know the best way to learn is to teach it so here's a textbook <laughs> read it and then you know you're gonna give lectures and I thought he was gonna you know sort of be timid and scared he's like no I like this and then he started reading and then uh, then I, I initiated the what we call the undergraduate seminar series. So it's completely run by the undergraduates. Um, mm-hmm. Well, the, the lecturers help, of course, guiding them mm-hmm. and whatnot, but they're giving the talk. It's, um, the, the, the talk's been attended by many people, uh, undergraduates, postgraduates, even staff members. And yeah, I think we, we sort of have uh, quite a big um, group of students now involved in this, uh, what we call now reading seminar. So they go through a book and then they, they give presentation. And I'm I like seeing how you, I, the, the one student started and then we get sort of the new students the next year and got the new students the next year. And then this continual like inspiration from the senior to the junior to the junior to the junior. And I think this is um, oh, that's great. what I found very exciting is the, that teaching can happen in that way as well. And uh, it's something that I, I really enjoy doing is um, spending time with the students. And obviously 
it's not the same every year. <laughs> it's a different topic, different different group of students. But uh, but yeah, it's very exciting. Mm. Mm. No, it's a fantastic initiative. Yeah. Is it going on this year still? It is going. We are doing leaf theory this year. We have Rory yeah. helping us, <laughs> who's an expert in leaf theory. So Rory is helping us with going through the book. Oh, it's yeah. beautiful. Yeah, it's, it's great. And then, um, yeah, uh, Madeleine wanted to say something? No, I just wanted to say that there's one thing that Rory didn't mention that happens in a, well, sort of a typical, semi-typical day in academia, and that's marking. A lot of marking, especially for <laughs> <Yeah. your module. laughs> So then for like more than a week, a typical day is sitting down and marking and going through a whole red pen. <laughs> so that's, I think for most of us, the least favorite part maybe, but very important to give that feedback. So I, I do I do take it seriously, but I think that's my least favorite part of yes. our job. Yeah. I think that what makes it least favorite part is the volume. Yes, yes. Yeah. I yeah. was just going to mention that. Like a small class is nice because you can actually see yes. what some students are thinking. But in big yeah. classes, oh yeah. my goodness. I think the, the volume yeah, no, it, it makes you tired. So this is yeah. why you, you stop enjoying no, it I mean, at some and, point. And yeah. it's, it's not like you're marking all kinds of different things. Typically yeah. in such a huge For module, real. you are forced one to mark question. one question. 800, 1,000 times, right? Yes. So after number 400, you have seen almost any variation possible. No, no, it is such a one. beautiful surprise when you come to number 650 and there's that one. Yeah. <laughs> and you just, wow, I have not seen this before. And it's, you almost throw a, a little party. Yes, something different. <laughs> no, I mean, for me, those days are... are or mainly, if I think back on them, listening to good music, drinking lots of tea, and and writing some feedback to students. <laughs> but it can sort of be like a, almost relaxing if you, if you you put yourself in the right mood. I, I feel like it's almost like if you you sort of get into a Zen mode of, of peeling onions or something. It's just <laughs> you're sitting there and you're marking and you're writing feedback, and and it's not too cognitively loaded because you you pretty much know what you need to say. I mean, you, you still need to look carefully that yes, you you are making sure exactly what they wrote and giving them feedback on their their argument. But it it can sort of be a relaxing, and it's. And it's it's critical. You have to do it, yeah, right? This is part of your job. So uh, it's the, you don't have to really worry that you 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 you're not doing something else because well, you have to be doing this now. Can I just say that sometimes this is really soul crushing in certain modules. I don't know if you guys have found this, but sometimes you just you get the same mistake over and over again, and you feel I really thought that I nailed this yeah. explanation. I really tried, but it didn't. <laughs> you know, it's like. Yeah. Oh, no, then, then no, I, can I can get relate really to that. Yeah. You want to cry. You want it's to. like, no, I, yeah. I explained this so many times. That's why you need the good music. Yes, that, that'll help. I think I should do that more. No, that's very true. <laughs> but luckily, everything is not like that. There's, there's very good moments. Of stuff. Something where the fact that I started now during the pandemic, or technically sort of started during the pandemic, is that online marking for me is much worse because. Um, obviously, I when I was a tutor and assistant lecturer, I also marked, and that was fine. Like you know, an actual test is nice, but this online marking for me is not great. I know, you, Rory, you had like some initiatives and you know things, so that would be great. But for I don't think that will work for a course like mine, where you have to have like these like essays basically then writing things. Mm -hmm. So the online marking for me is actually what the soul crushing part of it is, not the actual marking, but the online part of it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but oh. to put my f your finger on it, right? I, I don't think it's that much that it's it's online. It's that the the interface we yes, have to yes, do yes. it with That's what I is mean, yes. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so frustrated, waiting yes. for things to load, yes. waiting to change pen, waiting to scroll down. It's, exactly. it's just I mean, years and years and years of developing how to do good paper essays. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Online has no. not been developed no. at all. It no. is very poor. And uh, I mean, we can talk sometime about uh, uh, the system I have, which essentially yes. is just you put everything in one PDF and you mark like you would usually mark with pen. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, and it actually does some things then extra automatically. For yes. you. And then I've actually <laughs> spoken to some of the people who are using the system that I've developed now. And it's easier than doing it um, on paper. That's great. Because, because now it's easier to page through. Yeah. You can yeah. quickly search for a student number. There's no, you can, there's no, 
often with these big groups, right? There's the problem of only there's only one physical copy. So yeah. only one person can market at a time. Yes. If you have it digitally, you can just make multiple yeah. copies. No problem. Yeah. You see, this is some <laughs> other things that the academia people do, you know, with these initiatives. So, <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, I mean, so coming into to, to this uh, pandemic, I definitely was not expecting mm -hmm. myself to spend so much time programming. Mm -hmm. yeah. But this was, I, I identified this quite soon, that this was going to be a valuable thing to spend some time on and to get right because it was going to solve so many problems. And I spent, I don't know how long, last year, um, going into midnight, programming all kinds of systems to solve yeah. these problems. I had so much fun. I had to learn uh, another programming language to manage the things, but it, it was a lot of fun. And that's that's the kind of thing that, that can come unexpectedly. Yeah. Um, and you have to learn that. That's why I was saying you have to learn so many yeah. skills and different things that, uh, that you crop up. Yes, no, that's very true. <laughs> That is very true, yeah. Um, yeah, so that, that's the sort of the teaching side, and we talk about sort of um, there's a little bit of you know, innovation, maybe initiative and things that we... Um, so I, I quite like this sort of um, every year is not the same and every year is not something new, and uh, it's just very challenging, I feel like, this this job, and that's probably the appeal of it, right? So you, you, you yeah. ne you're never bored. Um, <laughs> I don't know whether it's a good thing or a bad thing. Not me yeah. bored. Um, Sometimes I, I long for those days that I was days. born. <laughs> it's like, if I could just have one or two boring days, again, it might actually be quite nice. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think another thing that we, we, we do, probably not talked about uh, very often, is uh, our service to the, the, to the university. So we... Um, uh, I I'm not sure, Belinda, which committee you're you're in. Not not in anything. Not yet. Not yet. Oh, okay. No. Yeah, that's probably yeah. a good thing. Uh, take it easy. Take it Don't easy. worry, Don't worry about it. <laughs> so the three of us, Rory, myself, and Madeleine, we're we're in the teaching committee, for example. So we are talking about you know some how ways to improve our teaching and sort of the the administrative side um, on how to how to improve that and sort of audit our teaching that kind of thing. Where there are people who are in the committee of maybe postgraduate and research and what what other committee that I'm... Uh, I think there's I'm marketing committees. Marketing on, committee yeah. is like uh, doing like sort of yeah. all the yeah. publicity from us and the sort of the social events and so on. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. And then there's yeah. also the one with all the, um, like the more, I don't know what you call it, the, like the, the Olympiad and all of those things. Yeah. I don't know yeah, what yeah, that yeah. is so, called. So um, it's all of these very interesting. Yeah, I think it's community things. engagement, which yes. I was about to get yeah. to. Is uh, that's okay. another pillar of our of our work is actually community engagement, which mm -hmm. can be a bit tricky when you talk about community engagement uh, when you're doing math, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, well, well, I mean, I think this is community it is engagement. <laughs> engagement. <laughs> It's, it's, it depends on, on what your, your, your preconceived idea yes. is of what community mm -hmm. engagement means. Yes. yes. Which, which community as well, right? This is the, yeah. what yeah. we talk about. So, uh, yeah, uh, what, one thing we did in, the, in, the, in, in, in 2020, uh, uh, well, we started in 2020. So the March 14, which are colloquially known as, the, as Pi Day 3.14, right, has been declared, well, was declared uh, International Day of Mathematics last year, which is fantastic. So we have a day. To celebrate mathematics and it's just fabulous and last year <laughs> i think we were the last um yeah, event on like, campus yeah. before we on went on lockdown, of lockdown. <laughs> we managed to <laughs> yes, on the verge yeah. of lockdown i think the president Do you remember it? <laughs> in the sun on the grass yeah. and outside <laughs> there were people it seems like a dream yeah, no special the distancing were the or board masks. on the on the <laughs> No social distancing. <laughs> yeah. No, I remember I was shaking oh, yeah, we elbow shaking already. Elbows already. <laughs> no, this is true. So we have some. We have the no shaking, no shaking hands policy. That was true. And uh, yeah, we uh, we were sitting in the in the Ola lawn uh, on campus, sort of like the grassy area, and we have our our board there. Uh, one of our students explaining some math, and there's some mathematical experiment. There's some origami. There's some arts and crafts and mathematics. It's, it was just a fantastic day. And I think that's that's one way of sort of I feel a a, a fantastic opportunity to uh, communicate mathematics to sort of larger audience is mm -hmm. uh, is from this uh, International Day of Mathematics, which I think is just great that uh, the the International Mathematical Union did to make it official. So we have a day where we we have this opportunity, right, to talk about people to talk about mathematics to to people. And this year we managed to do it again. 
online was a bit weird because it's online. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I was um, I was sort of um, in charge of the, uh, the the committee, and we broadcast a lecture and a discussion on YouTube. And I just after coming back to hope that to the sort of learning new skills, right? Never realized that I would have to sort of stream <laughs> a video from my living room. <laughs> yeah. Well, in in this job of being an academic, so it's uh yeah, I think it's it's evolving, right? The the sort of our teaching is evolving, um, following the trend. Um, I should I should not say trend. I should say sort of what is the natural development of 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 the mm-hmm. current um sort of um era of technology, right? I love the, no, no, the there's a, a lot of disruption happening. Yeah, yeah. And the, the, the most important skill you have to have in this age is the ability to learn, yes. how to adapt. Yes. And and that's actually quite nice because it tied back into sort of, um, if, if you think about mathematics, right? Um, what, I, I feel like what really, it taught me a lot in, in the sense of how do you learn? Um, so it's, it's not just necessarily that, you learn the content itself, but learning how to learn. Because yeah. I, I think unless it click with you, you don't fully understand what mathematics is. It's, it's very mm-hmm. difficult. It's, even though someone can sort of explain to you the same thing 10 times, if, if it doesn't click with you, it's very difficult to understand it fully. So this sort of um, skill of learning something, I think it's what, well, this is my opinion. Of course, as, as a mathematician, we're a bit biased. <laughs> <laughs> but I think uh, this is one thing that mathematics has taught me is that um, ability to actually wanting to learn something, wanting to know how does this thing work, right? This is what we mm-hmm. do every day. It's just how does this, what does it mean, right? And, and what is it saying and how does it work and what's behind the computer and all that kind of thing, sort of learning uh, the, the essence, um, if, if mm-hmm. I can put it that way. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, every day we, we, we keep on learning, whether it's from the teaching or the research. I mean, that's, I think, at the core maybe of what an academic uh, job is about, yeah. is to, to keep on learning and keep on exploring new ideas. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Cool. So did we want to say a little bit more on the, the, the research side? Yeah, sure. Right? I think we should. <laughs> I think our, our heads have all been somewhat preoccupied like with teaching, teaching because... <laughs> Um, we've we've we faced some significant challenges in in how do we adapt to to teaching, but of course a, a large amount of our time is also spent uh, doing some research. Mm-hmm. And well, what does that mean? Lots of ground applications. <laughs> That's one part. Of I it. think for me at the moment, because so. <laughs> I'm so new. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean that that's a, a, another skill that um, I think is is not always talked about or not always that, that clear going into academia is, is this, the skill of asking for money and making mm-hmm. a persuasive argument that you, people should be giving you money to fund this research. Yeah. And it's, it's critical it uh, for, for doing academic work. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's very true. And it's difficult. I mean, it's not something that just comes yeah. naturally to a lot of people, at least not to me. So, I mean, you can write a journal article, but to actually, you know, um, explain your maths to somebody that doesn't really know what you're doing it's a much different very different no, I, thing. I, I think it's it's almost a different skill yes. um r- writing a grant proposal to mm-hmm. to actually doing some good research to yes. as opposed to writing down a good article those are all separate uh, yes. tricky things to do uh, so again yeah. many skills to academic needs <laughs> yeah 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 uh, research i find is something that um I must say I don't enjoy in um, in uh, like sort of on my own. I, I like doing research when okay. I'm when I'm working with someone. Um, I mean, doing math on your own is fun, but doing it with someone else, I feel like it's it's a lot more fun because you get to see the problem from from different uh, points of view, and this is why I quite enjoy uh, let's say going to conferences. Um, this one mm-hmm. of well, one big part of our our job is. Um, going to uh, academic meetings, right, uh, conferences, um, present our work, but I think it's mostly networking, right? You yeah. meet with people and you have same interests or you're interested in the same sort of um, research questions and you start having a discussion and uh, perhaps working together or even the sort of point to someone that, oh, you mentioned this in your talk, I sort of vaguely remember 
you know, this paper I read like two years ago, whatever, here you go, mm-hmm. here's the paper. And that, that can be useful too, right? Just sort of um, yeah. telling someone that I'm struggling with this uh, question and people give you um, help, so to say, like nudge you to the correct direction. And I quite like sort of that environment of just um, having the opportunity to talk about your work with with people. Mm-hmm. And uh, this often um, I, I found that... Uh, when when I was still a student, I thought that um, you know university is quite a, a competitive thing because when you're doing math in a course, let's say you're doing calculus, mm-hmm. all you all you do is just that calculus, and then the people you see are the same people, and then these are the people sort of like you you are uh, judged by your marks, right? Okay, that that person got a hundred, that person got eighty, that person got sixty, that kind of thing, but eventually you evolve to sort of um you know some math better than other people and this mm-hmm. is where i think power of collaboration yeah. is then you bring um the things that you know and that the person brings the thing that the thing that they know and this becomes collaboration so um yeah. then then this sort of idea of competitiveness uh crumble a little bit and it's <laughs> becoming fun to actually work with different people so that's what i really enjoy from doing yeah. research yeah I mean, the, the point there I, that I like is that for the further you, you'd go in mathematics, the more you realize how, how, how you tiny the amount is that you know, how small it, a, a part it is of the big world of mathematics. And, 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 and it, it's, it's, sometimes it's a little difficult thing to accept. It's, okay, well, th- this is what I know well, and I, I have to network, and I have to find ideas from other places, and, and I can't master all of yeah. mathematics. It's impossible. Yeah. 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 I think there's a big misconception that um, mathematicians are these old people sitting in their office, like very distracted and you sort of just do your, that's sort of what what you picture when you hear mathematician. But I have to say the the further you go, you realize, Mm -hmm. wait, this is, this is not the case. You actually have to be able to socialize and Mm -hmm. um, express your ideas to other people, which is actually a very important thing then, which um, I think a lot of people don't know going into this. Um, obviously, you can work on your own, but as you said, you do. I think you do your best work um, with others, uh, which is quite important. Yeah, no, and I mean, just as uh, with mathematics, we, if you have all these skills, you're also not going to be a master of all of them, no. right? Yeah. You're going to have some areas that, that you are very good at, and you're going to have to ask advice and, and help from other people with some areas that you, you might not be so strong in. Yes. yes. Definitely, yes. Okay. Any, anything else that we want to say about research? Well, um, what's at the core of it? I, th- I think um, it's the, 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 the issue with mathematics and, and what is mathematics is sometimes it, it feels like, well, what does it mean to do research in mathematics? Isn't it done? Now, anybody that's <laughs> what, what are you doing? had a bit further exposure to mathematics realizes, no, this is is a vibrant area. There are still many theorems that are we don't know. Is it true or is it false? There are many branches of, of new mathematics developing and, and new ways of, of modeling things and uh, new new problems that we face that we have to sit around with and play with those ideas. And, and ultimately, it comes down to, to the community, right? Yeah. You, you sit around, you play with the idea, you talk to somebody else who's playing around with the idea. Sometimes you go to a conference and you don't even necessarily talk to somebody who's working in your area, but just getting exposure to different ideas, ah, that gives you an idea. And, and it's playing around with these ideas and developing it. And then, of course, you, you publish. And that is the process of, of forming a consensus, right? Many people are publishing. Then we agree, okay, yes, this is a, a new mathematical fact that we can now add to the toolbox. Yeah. And okay, well, somebody might uh, disagree and there might be contention about that <laughs> fact, but generally speaking, right, that's how we, we build onto the, yeah. the, the, the body of knowledge in mathematics. And, and the exciting and the beautiful thing for me, particularly to mathematics, is that often that stands for a long, long time. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not, it's not going to become irrelevant. It's not going to become untrue. That if you have proved it rigorously mathematically, it is true for all time. Yeah. And just, I mean, in my own research, I'm, sometimes I'm, I'm baffled that I'm citing results from more than 100 years yeah, back. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, this, came, this discussion came up in, uh, in, the, in the panel discussion um, on Pi Day was that, um, so when, when um, people were trying to prove the parallel postulate, 
from the other four of Euclid's postulates. And um, it, many people failed uh, in doing yeah. so. But the, the story of this, uh, while they try to prove it and they, they fail, they actually came up with the ideas of non-Euclidean geometry. So uh, it's quite interesting also by asking something, and even if you fail at it, there are some, perhaps some good things that can come out of it. And this whole concept of non-Euclidean geometry turned out to be very useful many, many, many years later when we talk about relativity, right? Um, that's, yes. the, that's the perfect place to do it, right? It's, you can't do it in Euclidean geometry. Yeah? You need something else. And it's just uh, baffling some of the sort of even something uh, as simple as just talking about prime numbers and how important it is in encryption, yeah. for example. And uh, we probably... Well, a lot of mathematicians did not know, right? They long passed mm -hmm. and then their work was not known at the time to be very useful. But now it is extremely useful. Say. So we, yeah, yeah. that keeps on happening math. Yeah, that's, it, that, it's, that's not immediately useful, unfortunately. 200 <laughs> years down the line, maybe it might be the center for a huge application. <laughs> But I, I, I very much like the, the, the example of non-Euclidean geometry because that is such a beautiful example of a, a modern um, result in mathematics that has such huge implications. And, well, the huge implication is your smartphone yeah. and its GPS. Yeah. That would not work with the break, <laughs> without the breakthrough of relativity and the mathematics that was needed to underpin that breakthrough in relativity. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. So um, I think it's just asking these questions, working towards something, and um, yeah, something can come out of it. So th th this is, again, whether you want to call it learning, whether you want to call it just I'm curious, uh, but that's basically what we do, right? Um, yeah. th while we're doing research, it's just asking these questions. And um, as we, we talked about, mostly mathematics are built on an ax well, axiomatic system with uh, with logic, and then we sort of build this world of mathematics, and then if you just tweak a little bit of one axiom, there will be a new another world open up. Yeah. And uh, maybe oh, what about if we do it that way, and this another world open up, and it's just um, uh, call it imaginative or call it whatever, but it's a interesting and maybe it's useful at at some point. So um, yeah. yeah. And then, the, of course, the, the one last aspect is that, of course, we have to train the mathematicians of the future. Oh, yes. <laughs> right? Not only the undergraduates, but to train them to do research, yes. because that's also a different skill. And we have to train them about, well, we've discussed many of the skills you need as a, an academic, grant proposals being one of them. Hmm. Um, so we, you take sort of, I, th I think it's uh, maybe an apprenticeship is almost yes. not a bad way of looking at no. it, right? Yeah. It's, it's, I, I think uh, universities do have some very old traditions still. Um, and th this is one of them, right? You, you, you take a few people under your wing and you guide them through the process of what does it mean to do research? And, mm. and often you learn a lot by doing that. Definitely, yeah. yeah. yeah supervising students is one, one other aspect right? <laughs> <laughs> of both teaching and research. That's kind of like a combination of both. Yeah. Um, supervising students. It's not easy, um, but it's, yeah, it's challenging, but it's, it can be fun. Yeah. And rewarding. And yeah. rewarding, yes. <laughs> okay. Um, wow. That was a, a that was beautiful good. number of topics we've covered. Yeah, I think so too. So I think <laughs> we, I think we can end here um, with a bit of a teaser for the next episode. So we already have our first guest booked. Um, for the next episode. So the guest will be my friend from Australia. Uh, his name is Kenneth Chan. He has a PhD in, let me get it right, non-commutative algebra and algebraic geometry. But mm -hmm. he is working now. Well, he actually has quite a diverse um, work experience. First, he was doing postdoc at University of Washington, and he also postdoc at MSRI, that's Mathematical Sciences Research Institute, that's in Berkeley in California. And then he also worked as a computational biologist, a software developer, and now he's a data scientist. So I think for the for, for <laughs> our first guest, <laughs> moving from showcasing yeah. everything you can do with mathematics, moving from algebraic geometry to a data scientist, yeah, we'll we'll hear his story. So um, that will be our next episode. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Okay.
Okay, so uh, let's thank everyone for their time and uh, for a fantastic episode. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, we'll see you soon. Cheerio! Bye! Bye.